today, um, I want to talk about water. I brought my water bottle, so let's look at a nice picture of water. Uh, there are, uh, I love data, I love statistics, um, I love, I just, I'm crazy, I'm weird like that. My children tell me that I have a head full of useless information. So I want to share some of that useless information with you for a moment. Okay, if, if you go home and you pour some water out of your tap into a water bottle like this, it will be about 58 degrees. That's the average cold water out of a tap. Um, if you were to go to one of our wonderful lakes and it was 58 degrees, um, that would be beautiful on maybe like a 90 degree day, but not today. Um, so in about 15 minutes, of being in 58 degrees, you would lose body movement. You would, you would paralyze, you couldn't move. Uh, in about 60 minutes, you would become unconscious. And in about six hours, you, your life would end. That's 58 degrees. So we love it in July, we don't in January. We love it in a water bottle, but not um, swimming. At 58 degrees, it's pretty cold. Um, the warmest, but the coldest I've been in Lake Michigan, by the way, is 38 degrees. Shocking, just shocking. All right, so lukewarm water. It, this has been in a water bottle uh, all day, so it's kind of, it's room temperature. Lukewarm, the average lukewarm temperature is between 75 and 90 degrees. Uh, a little less than our body temperature. And if you were to hang out in water between 79 and 90 degrees, you would lose movement after 12 hours. So you can kind of do that, you know, hang out for a while. That, that would seem okay for a season. Uh, if we lowered the temperature to 75 degrees after two hours, you would lose movement, and after three hours, death would occur. So it's lukewarm can go to cold very quickly. Hot water, if this was hot, if I put hot water in my Yeti, this morning when I left the house at 545, it would still be hot. I can keep coffee in my Yeti all day long, and it's, it's still hot. It's a beautiful thing. The average hot temperature is between 100 and 115 degrees. With water that temperature, we shower. We get clean. My family enjoys that after I run four or five miles. They like it when I take a hot shower. We can um, sit in a hot tub. We, purification happens. If you raise the temperature to 120 degrees, it becomes unhealthy, and third-degree burns happen in about 10 minutes. If you raise it again to 125 degrees, third-degree burns happen in two minutes at 125 degrees. So why am I telling you that? That, that why, why do you need to know that, right? That some of you are thinking, what does this have to do with anything? Because of these two verses. Can we go to the next slide, please? These two verses right here. John 7, 38 says this. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. All of us in this room our living water if we have believed and have Christ as our Savior. All of us are living water. Not all of us are hot living water. Some of us are lukewarm living water and we're satisfied with that. And some of us are cold living water and we're satisfied with that. And the point of showing you water temperatures 
is to show you uh, how bad it can be for us to remain spiritually lukewarm or spiritually cold. Death happens. The flip side, if we are um, too hot, some of you are like, Chris, you can never be too hot spiritually. Yes, you can. Go to a football game and you can see too hot. Go to a football game and you can walk down um, the whatever your favorite town is to go to football games to, and you will see people with speakers set up and a blowhorn and big signs, and they say, repent or you're going to hell, and they're making this big scene and not doing any impact at all. And we tend to call those people, help me out, starts with a C, we tend to call those people crazy. We also tend to call those people judgmental and legalistic and um, harsh and unloving. And so there's a balance where we need to fall with our temperature. We don't want to be lukewarm, but we don't want to be offensively hot either. The second verse that's up here, Matthew 12, 34, the second half, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I'll tell you what heart is. It's not this. It's our thoughts and our feelings, our decision making, all of that. That'll, we'll get back to that in a little bit. Um, but I'd like you to turn to Deuteronomy 6. And, and we're going to talk about, I'm going to give you four principles today on improving the spiritual temperature of your home. I do not have the perfect home. As soon as I walk in the door, it becomes imperfect. I am not the perfect husband. I am not the perfect father. But there are some things that I have learned. And if we passed around a microphone, there would be some things that other people have learned. And we could all come together and have this big pool of how to improve the spiritual temperature of our home. The main, the main point for today is what is our spiritual temperature are we individually cold lukewarm or hot and does it flow or how does it flow into those around us what is our spiritual temperature and how does it flow into those around us so deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 1 through 9 i brought my new king james today and when I opened it, I was reminded why I don't use this Bible. It's a little small. Here it goes. Uh, verse 1. Now this is the commandment, and these are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you, that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. If you write in your Bible, if you underline commandment, uh, now, this is the commandment, and these are the statutes. So what this really says is, um, this is your commissioning. The, the commandment is commission, and statutes and judgments are the terms. This is your commissioning, and this is how I want you to do it. ESPN would say, you had one job. That's it. This is the job. What we're about to read, this is what we were supposed, what Israel was supposed to do, and what we are supposed to do. Okay, verse 2. Um, that you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, you and your son and your grandson, all the days of your life, that your days may be prolonged. Verse 3. Therefore, hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it. That it may be well with you and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you. A land flowing of milk with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, uh, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children 
and shall talk of them when you sit in your homes, when you walk by your way, when you lie down, when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as a front line between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Let's pray together. God, thank you uh, for today. God, thank you that you are the living water and um, you refresh us when we get uh, a little uh, too cool. God, I pray today that you would um, help us to give real self-evaluation um, and that we would realize that we would be reminded um, that we lie when we lie to ourselves, we're only lying to ourselves. God, I ask that you um, would illuminate the pages of Scripture for us this morning, that your Spirit would fill this room, that you would remove direct distractions, and that you would keep um, Satan far, far away from this place today. God, open our ears so we may hear it, and open our eyes that we may see what it is that you would have us to see. And God, certainly... Please make your words louder than my words today. In Jesus' name, amen. So verse 1 through 3 kind of sets it up. Um, chapter 5 is the giving of the Ten Commandments. Uh, yes, it's Exodus 20, but it's Deuteronomy 5 as well. So uh, verses 1 through 3 really kind of sets us up. Israel, uh, this is your commission. This is what your one job. This is what I want you to do. I want you to do it so well that your children and your grandchildren see you do it. So it, none of us are off the hook. Whatever season of life we're in, whatever stage of life we're in, we have a responsibility and a duty in improving the spiritual temperature of our home. I know that my parents love it when my kids spend the night. They sugar them up, and they spoil, they do things they're not supposed to do. I know that that never happens to any grandparents' homes that are here. That's just, that's just unique to my family. Um, but grandparents have a special role in the lives of children. And so if you're a grandparent, please don't think that you're off the hook. Um, these verses apply to you just as much as they apply um, to me as a father and a husband. Verses 4 to 9, here's, here are the four principles. Verse, the first principle is this. Um, Jesus Christ is the only sufficient God you will ever need to find. Here's verse, verse 4 says this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. For us, that maybe that seems like a no-brainer. But when Israel spent 400 years as slaves in Egypt, they, they were, there were all sorts of gods that the Egyptians worshipped. And there were competing gods. They didn't know if one god was going to make another god mad and then do something to get back, back at that god. This is how they lived. They lived wondering if, if, their, if the gods they worshipped were really sufficiently going to take care of them and so so Yahweh Jehovah starts their commission with I am the only God that you will ever need I'm enough on your worst day of life I'm enough you lose everything I'm enough you're gonna eat manna for 40 years but I'm enough medical report, I'm enough. In every circumstance, I'm enough. And that's, that's how Jesus begins this. Jesus Christ is the only God we will ever need. So you might know this. Um, not all roads lead to heaven. We live in a culture, we, our country is great at trying to trying to make us spiritual people uh, and trying to combine every religion. I, I call it Starbucks spirituality. 
where you walk into Starbucks and you can put a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit more of this until you get a drink that you like, that works for you. Uh, our country loves to do that with religion and faith. Jesus Christ is it. It's the only one that we will ever, ever need. Nothing else comes close. That's principle one. If we just walk away with that today, that reminder, that should get us somewhere in our week. Here's principle number two. Principle number two uh, is this. Prioritize God's word in your life personally. I kind of got on my Sunday school class for this this morning. Um, because they don't bring their Bible to church. And, and so, uh, if, if, we, if we don't take the word of God and put it into our lives personally, we are uh, lukewarm at best. There's all sorts of data. Uh, uh, you, can, you know, you can Google anything, right? That's who knows you can Google anything. Raise your hand if you know you can Google anything. Okay, so I'm trying to see if you're awake here. Uh, so, so you can Google anything. But there, there, I, I like to look for valid reports. There are some, I don't know where they compile their data, but they believe that on any given Sunday, 60% of people in a church are, are either uh, in the cold or lukewarm category. I would like to think that's not true. And so would you. Uh, but if we don't personalize the word of God, th then, then we will quickly become lukewarm or cold. And since this is the Old Testament, maybe, maybe you're one of those people that you're like, ah, it's the Old Testament. We don't really need to do this. So here are Jesus' words. We can go to the next slide. Um, so Jesus said the same thing. And so I gave you also heart, soul, mind, and strength. Here's what they mean. Uh, Jesus answered, so there's this religious debate going on. The Pharisees asked Jesus, if I only have to do two things to remain good in God's eyes, what are the two things I have to do? If I can cut all the rest aside, what are the only the two things I have to do? Jesus said to them this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. The first one might be easier than the second one. So here's Jesus' answer is this. Here's how you actually really do this. Our heart is our thoughts goes on up here. You know, the, you argue with yourself to, to do that thing. We try to justify it. I'm having this conversation in my head. Should I do it or should I not do it? Our soul, our feelings, our purposes, our desires, our passions, our mind, the logic, the reasoning, the decision making that goes on in our head, and the strength, uh, capabilities, and potential. That's Love the Lord your God with everything inside of you. Prioritize God's word in your life. If we don't get the first two right, we can never do the second two. So can I have the next, the next slide, please? Here is, here is a, a picture. This is Lifeway Research. Uh, you, our Sunday school material is Lifeway. It's kind of legitimate. Um, so here we go. How much of the Bible have you read personally? This shocked me a little bit. Um, only 23 and 32% of our country uh, says they've read at least almost all of it. And I wonder how, mu how many of us would, would be in the purple or the red or kind of the maroon colors. We don't really read our Bibles. And I wonder how many of us would be in the categories on the left. 
if we're going to improve the spiritual temperature of our homes, we need to be in our Bibles. Uh, let's go to the third principle, and I'm going to come back to this uh, a little bit uh, with a different slide. Principle number three is this. Model God's word while you teach God's word to your family. Model God's word while you teach God's word to your family. So I, I am rarely on social media. I think most of the time it's a waste of time. Um, and so, um, but I was scrolling through something uh, on Friday, and I saw this picture, and it was a dad and a little boy holding hands, walking, and, and the dad said to the little boy, be careful where you walk. And, and the, the little boy looked up at his dad and said, no, daddy, you be careful where you walk because I walk in your footsteps. Perfect. Model God's word while you teach God's word to your family. Um, so in 2013, I read this book. Uh, that might shock some of you. I read a book in about three days. And, and it gave, it was on this topic right here. And a couple pieces of the information was this. Um, about a thousand teenagers were surveyed in this book. And two-thirds of them said their parents are the greatest influences in their lives as long as their words and actions match. Maybe that needs to, two-thirds of teenagers said their parents are the number one influences in their lives as long as their words and actions matched. No pressure, right? In the same report, grandparents were the number two influence. Interestingly enough, like pastors are eight and nine on the list. When parents are consistent, children are 67% more likely to walk faithfully with Jesus as adults. When grandparents are consistent, children are, not, are 43% more likely to faithfully walk with Jesus as adults. What we do matters. How we model God's word matters. Dads, grandfathers, dads specifically. Um, there's another report that says when, when we walk with Jesus well, 90% of the time, all of our children and family will follow. 90% of the time. Uh, there's, that's, there's some validity to that. So uh, Ken, Ham, uh, Ken Ham is, is the, the founder of Answers in Genesis, Creation Museum, ARC, all of that. Um, so Ken Ham wrote this book that I listened to one summer. And he said, most kids have already decided that they're going to walk with Jesus by the time they hit fifth grade. They, they, they have decided whether or not Jesus will be their God as an adult by fifth grade. For us to uh, model God's word to children well matters. So here are a few ways... Here are a few ways to do it. Um, I knew that me reading them maybe go too quickly, so I put them on the screen for you. Uh, while you're looking at that, let me say this. Whatever our heart is full of uh, comes out of our mouth. Uh, the things that reach our heart will pierce the hearts of our children and grandchildren. Um, we and they need to be pierced with God's word frequently. 
So here's the list. Here are a few ideas that can help you improve uh, the spiritual temperature to help keep your heart full of God's word. The first one is this. Um, you can debate me all you want on this. That's, that's okay. I'm fine with that. I've been wrong at least once. Preserve Sunday. Um, if we, I know this is true for me, if I am crazy busy with everything on Sunday, and Sunday is not a sacred day in our family, I will raise children that think Sunday is not a sacred day. And if they get busy doing things with their kids and don't go to church because I taught them that Sunday was a busy day, why should I be surprised? It's true for my, that's true for me. Take it or leave it. Number two, read your Bible in the parking lot while, while waiting to pick up kids. My phone is somewhere in this room. Uh, but we have a device that we take with us. And we scroll through everything other than our Bible app. While we're sitting in the parking lot, while we're standing in the line at the grocery store. If you shop at Aldi, you are well aware of what it means to stand in a line at a grocery store. Read your Bible while you're in the parking lot waiting to pick up kids. Number three, pray while you're stopped at a red light. Super easy. Um, uh, number four, listen to audio scripture while you're driving to work. You can download any app that has the Bible and it has, a, it has an audio feature. You can hit the audio button and you're good to go. Um, number five, this, is, this one is one of my personal favorites. Um, it's, it really works. We've tried all of these. Uh, get a dry erase marker and write a verse on your bathroom mirror in the morning. While your kids are fighting because they take too long in the bathroom, they can read a verse and be reminded to put things into perspective. And it wipes right off. You can put a different verse up there every day. Uh, number six, text your family the same verse in the middle of the day. Uh, I know that I need a... A, a, some days I need an alignment in the middle of the day. Anyone else with me? Like I need Jesus coffee about, about 3 o'clock. Text, text your family the same verse in the middle of the day. Your family needs, a, needs spiritual uh, something in the middle of the day as well. Uh, number, number seven, uh, take turns praying at meals. Number eight, take a 30-day challenge to listen to Christian music only. Um, it is proven, again, by they, I have no clue, um, how they collect this data. 60 to 65% of Christians never listen to Christian music. Um, if we're going to fill our mind with God's word, if we're going to model God's word while we teach God's word, then it's important to always saturate our minds with God's word. I could go on entertainment, but I'll stick to the list. Uh, number nine, download a reading plan and read one chapter in the New Testament every morning before your family leaves the house. It takes three minutes. This one is actually the best one that our family does. Um, we gather around our kitchen in the morning. I open up. We have a, a Bible reading plan. You can write that address down. You can get that reading plan. Uh, it is, you can read the, through the entire New Testament in one year. In five minutes, uh, in five minutes a day, five days a week, you can have the New Testament read in a year. So our family does this. We open up. Here's the chapter. We read a chapter. It is the it is the last thing that we do before we leave in the morning. And and our 16 year old says it's one of the best things that we do as a family. And it doesn't take very much time at all. Um, are we perfect? No. Do we miss days? Yes. Is more our mornings crazy in our house? Sometimes. We have an 11-year-old daughter. But you can use these. They work. These things alone can help improve the spiritual uh, temperature of your home. Okay, principle number four is, is this. Um, Spill Jesus into people outside your family. Um, and the, the verses say this, verses 8 and 9. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and you shall 
and they shall be as the frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on the, on the gates. So that's all figurative, um, but it reminded them of things the Egyptians did. Egyptians wore inscribed jewelry on their forehead and around their arm to protect them from danger. They actually believed it would give them a good omen. Um, and today, if you go to Cairo today, you will see doors that are painted red, white, and green, and it signifies three sentences from the Quran, or Quran, which part of the country you're in. Um, it, it signifies God is the creator, God is one, and Muhammad is his prophet. Moses taught the Israelites, Moses taught them to turn cultural practices into spilling, Jeho spilling Jehovah into other people's lives. Cultural practices into channeling things with God. So here's the last slide, and I want to wrap this up. It's a, it's a picture of a funnel. If we are water, the funnel is what helps us say yes and no to. So I learned uh, a couple really important principles about 10 years ago in my life. Um, I sat on them for a while. There was a guy I went to a conference. I, I don't even remember the guy's name. I don't even know if he's a Christian. Um, but he said, what would happen in your life if you just focused on the things that you do well and let someone else do the things that you do poorly? And, and so... I sat on that for about four or five years until I figured out that he was right. And, and why should I struggle at the things that I don't do well when God has already equipped other people to do what I don't do well? And so the funnel is, for me, the funnel is, um, the funnel for me helps me to say yes to things and help me to say no to things. And if I am pouring my water, my living water through the funnel, that helps me make the right choices to keep the spiritual temperature of my home at a stable, constant place. So these are hanging on my office wall. These are the five things that are core. Uh, they get first attention. The first one is my wife. Um, the second one, the first one is my walk with God. The second one is my wife. The third one is filling the treasure chest of memories with our children. The fourth one is providing resources that help other people grow spiritually. And the, the fifth one is equipping people to walk with Jesus the way they were designed to walk. That's my funnel. That helps me say yes to things and say no to things. And so I've said no to some things because that's not the water that God gave me. And so... Um, as you look at 2019 and you look at what your spiritual temperature is and you look at where you want to go as a family, um, where is God asking you to improve your temperature? It's not brain science. I think that God prompts us. We sometimes we just need reminders. Where is God asking us to improve the spiritual temperature of our home? What is God asking us to do? What is our part? And what are the things that we're supposed to say no to? What are the things that we're supposed to say yes to? I, I know, true story and then I'm done. Um, I know some good, good people that their families have crashed because they were crazy too busy and anything went in the funnel that was was given them opportunity and they ended up divorced um, because they said yes to too many things and they didn't say yes to the right things and so I want to challenge you to make um, improving the spiritual temperature of your home a priority for 2019 let's pray together God uh, thank you
Thank you for your love. Thank you uh, for your goodness. Thank you for that you pour into our lives over and over and that you are the living water. God, we um, graciously um, are honored that you choose us to be your instruments. Um, God, we ask that you would use us in a unique, special way in 2019 and that you would help us um, to improve the spiritual temperature of our home. God, I ask that you would bless us uh, this year, that you bless our church this year, and that you would um, be with those who, who might be struggling this morning. God, I ask that you would impress your spirit onto them to make some adjustments in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen.